You're watching AndyTube, and this is part 23 of my Singer Model 404 restoration series. And it's time to put in the needle bar. Yay, hey. This has always been one of my favorite uh, parts of restoration, was the needle bar. I, I think it was because so many years ago, uh, the first machine I did, the needle bar was really in bad shape and it took me a long time to figure how to uh, get it out. Then I got it cleaned up, I got it back in, and then I realized I didn't know how to set it at the right height. <laughs> so, you know, through trial and error I got it. and. Uh, Still, I get kind of excited doing the needle bar. Um, I like to get it cleaned up with the rest of the machine and uh, all the parts to it and get it back in there and then reset it at the factory height. And now that I know how to do it, it's, it's, really, it's really no big deal. On the needle bar, there's two bands or circles and they usually appear black, although they're just kind of etched in there. And uh, the top, they're called timing marks. And the top mark is to set the needle bar height with. And the bottom or lower mark is to set the hook timing. And the way that I remember that is the, the needle, the needle bars up on top and the hook is down on the bottom. So the upper mark is for needle bar and the lower mark is for timing. So I'm going to get all these parts together and uh, I'll show you a, a close-up picture of the parts we're going to use right now and then we'll come back and and uh, get started. So besides the uh, needle bar here that we're, we that we use, the other parts are this um, needle bar connecting stud, and that that goes in here to the. Um, needle bar connecting link that goes to the needle bar crank and it has a little uh, screw on there that's that on the stud that's called the needle bar clamping screw because that's what holds the needle bar in place and then of course we have the needle clamp on the bottom and it has a needle clamp thumb screw in it and then we've got the little tiny pieces that fasten to that. And they are the needle stop screw. It screws in at, towards the bottom of the needle bar. And there's a little washer that goes with that screw that's called the needle bar stop screw thread protector. So a little cupped washer there. And that stop screw is used to connect this needle clamp thread guide. It's like a heavy gauge wire and that's the thread guide needle clamp thread guide. So there's one other part that's not in the picture and most people don't know about it. And that <coughs> that goes inside this um, needle bar connecting stud and it's called a needle bar connecting stud oil wick and I'm going to stick it on the end of a of a needle here so that you can get a better look at it but what it is it's like a little felt pellet it's just like a yeah I don't know how else to describe it, a uh, uh, felt pellet, and it goes into the back end of that needle bar connecting stud. 
So I always pick it out with a, with a needle and wash it real good with the crud cutter and dry it out. And then you just put it back in, just get it in there and kind of give it a twist and turn and get it down in there flush like that. And you see uh, up at the top of this is an oil port and on the on the back bottom side is another oil port. So when you when you're oiling your machine it kind of fills that stud with the oil and the wick keeps it from running out the back and then it lets a little bit uh, drip into the inside of the needle bar connecting link because that's always uh, rotating. So once I once I put that in there, I'm going to put some fresh oil onto that wick. And if you take apart a machine, and I've taken some off, and the wick is gone or it is just so clogged up with stuff, I'll make a new one from a, a piece of a felt, uh, a spool felt. You know, the little felt disc that you, you put around your thread spool. I'll just cut a piece of that about the same size and curl it up and put it in there. So, okay. I've got that ready to go. So, all you do with this is just uh, you stick this needle bar connecting stud into the needle bar connecting link like that and it doesn't it doesn't screw in or anything um, it's kept in place just by the tension of the needle bar um, going through it and into the needle bar bushing down here. Now I've already pre-oiled the inside of the bushing and all these parts just to make them easier to assemble and stuff. So I can just go ahead now and slide the needle bar. I've got that screw back off. The clamping screw. Got it backed off a few turns. So I can stick my needle bar down in there, just like that. And then I'll just guide it down into the needle bar bushing, like so. And then I'm just going to eyeball it right now up close to the top and tighten that clamping screw up so it doesn't just fall out the bottom here. And I'm, I'm just, I just clamped it enough to hold it. But, um, well, actually I overdid it a little. I want to leave it a little bit loose so I can turn the needle bar. Because you've got to kind of line it up. You know, whoops, it's still, <laughs> everything is so clean now. Look at that, yeah. It is looking good. Let's see, can I, yeah, so now I can move it up and down a little bit. And uh, when I put the, the needle clamp and thumb screw and stuff, I'll be able to twist it to line it up the way I want. Okay, so the way you set the height on this is you want the needle bar in the lowest position. And the way I do it is just by watching the needle bar connecting stud. So I turn the wheel towards me until it goes down. And you'll see it bottom out and start back up. Right? So I just kind of rock the wheel back and forth until I feel like I'm all the way to the bottom. Like so. Now, the way you use the timing mark is the upper timing mark has to line up right at the bottom of the needle bar bushing. So you got to be able to see the upper timing mark. And I can't. I can see the lower one. So let me twist it. There's the lower one. And there's the upper. So I think I'm a little bit too low because I can see the silver needle bar above the top timing mark. So you just really got to get down the eyeball at about the same level as the bottom of that needle. 
bushing, needle bar bushing, and get that up so you got the black line right up against the bottom of that bushing. So you got the top timing mark parallel with the bottom of that bushing. Now, we, I'm going to just kind of eyeball this. You see this little hole right there? That's for the needle stop screw when you, when you put on the, the needle uh, clamp. So I'm just going to kind of try and eyeball it so that I'm looking dead on it from the end of the machine. And then I'm going to tighten, snug this up a little bit with the idea that I'm going to hold that height position. So let's see, Is, am I bottomed out there? Yep. And I can, I can see that top timing mark. So <clears throat> I'll raise this up where I can get to it a little bit better. And then I'm just going to attach these other parts here. So I'm just going to put on the needle clamp with the, the thumb screws towards the back of the machine. It doesn't want to stay on there because it's so clean. So then I'm going to line up the um, needle stop screw and I'm going to put that uh, washer over it with the cup part towards the head of the screw. That's what it does. Is it, it keeps the thread from getting stuck behind the head of the screw. So just like that. And then I'm going to put the little uh, the little wire thread guide here, the needle clamp thread guide. And it's going to go like so, I believe. Because if it went like this, it would stick out like to the left of the needle. So we're going to turn that around and Put the end of the wire in the loop, that end on first, and then hold up that uh, needle clamp so that the hole in it lines up with the hole in the needle bar, and see if you can get that screw started. You got to push the washer back a little bit because if you just turn the washer, you won't be turning the screw. And it's just another little <laughs> fiddly, as one of my favorite commenters said, fiddly uh, activity here, fiddly parts. Oh, goody, I think I got it started. Okay. Then I'll take my screwdriver tip in there and finish tighten that up. And as it starts to get tight, well, let me do it by hand a little more. As it starts to get tight, you have to hold up that uh, thread guide a little bit to keep it from falling down. And we keep turning this and turning it and turning it. And pretty soon it'll get snug in there. And it is righty tighty. It's not one of the weird backwards ones. kind of working on it backwards here so I'm just trying not to block your view but <clears throat> let me finish it up I think you get the idea you know it's a screw so there so you got to have that uh, thread guide up don't let it sag down all right that looks pretty good so Let's check our timing mark again. So I'll bottom out, I'll bottom this out to the bushing. Okay. 
and then I'll come down here and yep it still looks good I see the that top timing mark right at the bottom of the bushing opening so it kept my height good now I'm a little crooked here so I'm going to line this up there is a method in the service manual for this where you put in two number 18 needles and you turn the hook and get the point there and this bottomed out and you know then you know if you're aligned right but it's kind of a headache and if I have a stitching problem I'll do that but I think if you stand facing the machine or sit facing the machine and you look on you can you can see when you've got the thumb screw lined up with the parallel edge of the bed there so give it your best shot there have confidence in yourself you are the boss mechanic of this machine and then go ahead and clamp uh, screw down on that clamping screw nice and tight don't crush it but screw down nice and tight oh yeah look at that woohoo good job huh now we check our timing bottom to me it's easier to look when this bottoms out than the needle bar so I always look up here okay bottomed out timing mark right there about to disappear into the bushing and my thumb screw and stop screw look parallel and it's not hard to adjust you get the idea now it's got it's one screw you back this off a little bit and you fiddle around with it back and forth and up and down when it's at the lowest spot and you can adjust it any time that you want and you can take it out and clean it if you if you watch the removal you take all these parts off and you back that screw off three or four turns and you push the needle right up through the bushing and that clamp and just pull it right out clean it polish it put it back in adjust it adjust the height Ta da way to go so I knew you could do it I knew you could and I'm glad that you came and watched so that just a refresher to remind yourself that you can do these kind of things no problemo so thanks again uh, for tuning in to my series here and uh, we'll be continuing on we're going to have to put the uh, presser bar in with the pressure adjuster and the little lever and all that and then we got to set the height of that presser foot height from above the needle plate and we have to be sure that when the presser foot is lifted up and the needle bar is down that they don't hit right here but no worries I'll show you how to do it no problem so tune in next time okay thanks take care